Let me move my camera down a little bit. There we go. How's everybody doing? Let's see. Let me turn my chat on. And I don't think, I think the best way for me to see my chat. I don't think, I think the best way for me to see my chat. Woo. Replay. There we go. Okay. All right, I can totally see this. So, Hi, Laura and Lisa is Lisa is or let's see, Laura and Lisa is your mom, right? So I just wanted to say hello. And I can't tell how many of you are on. But um, um, so pop up. Pop a little comment in the chat and just make sure that you can hear me okay. Um, yes, yes, that's correct. Laura and Lisa is mom. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I want to get started on time because I want to respect everybody's schedule. I know we have a lot to do this summer. Um, so I just want to say hello, all of my kid creators. And I'm Chef Tiffany, and today we are going to make homemade pepperoni pizza rolls. And I really believe that kids can make anything, and that includes you. And so I'm super excited that you're here. This class is actually a cook-along class. We will condense this video, and if you're watching the replay, there's a link right up here to uh, see just a condensed version if you want one of those tasty style videos that you go through the whole thing in, in 10 minutes. Um, but this, if you watch this video all the way through, this is gonna be a cook along. We're gonna go um, do it step by step. We're gonna break it down. I always, my son always goes, we're gonna break it down uh, into each individual step. And I'm gonna talk a lot about things that you don't see in other videos on the internet and classes, which are things that adults, when they're show, recording their videos, they just assume that their audience knows, but kids don't always know that. And they don't know like all the little tips and tricks maybe that adults have learned over the years. So I'm gonna give you all of those little tricks as we go along. So let's break it down and get started step by step. So the first thing is, um, hi, Annika. Good to see you. Does everybody have their recipe printed out? I hope so. I want to go through this a little bit um, first and just to go through our ingredients and all the equipment that we need just to make sure we have everything. So I have one and a half cups of warm water. So if you haven't gotten your water, then go ahead and like turn your sink on to hot because that'll take a minute to for it to warm up. Um, we've got some honey, some olive oil, some instant yeast for today, for today's purposes, because we're doing this as a live cook along. We got instant yeast. If you were doing this on another day and you had just regular yeast, that's fine. You just have to let your dough set for the appropriate amount of time. Um, but this, 
fast acting yeast, we only have to let our dough set for 10 or 15 minutes rather than like an hour or two uh, with, you know, normal, uh, normal dough. Uh, then we've got salt. I've got, you can kind of barely see it over here. I've got a big container of flour. I've got my pizza sauce. If you don't have pizza sauce and you just have spaghetti sauce, that is totally fine. They are so close. If you uh, notice a difference, really the main ingredient difference between pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce is just some extra seasoning. So you can put like an extra teaspoon of oregano in it. Uh, it's really based on your taste. You can play around with that. Be, this is where you get to be creative while we're in the kitchen is by um, trying different things. So that's my favorite thing about it. Uh, we've got some shredded mozzarella cheese. I've got some cornstarch, which we're just going to dip in later. We're not actually putting that in. Uh, I've got some pepperoni. And then I've got some, now the recipe says grated Parmesan cheese. So a lot of people think that's in this canister, which is fine. You can totally use that. That's exactly what the recipe called for. I'm a little bit of a uh, Parmesan snub. So I also, I just got some shredded Parm, which is really inexpensive at Aldi. I love Aldi for all of my, um, pantry and staple foods. They don't have a lot of specialty things, um, but I was really excited. They had both the instant yeast and the shredded Parmesan. So this whole container was only, I think maybe, a, I don't even think it was $1.99. It was like a little less than that. So I, I went with some fresh, but you can totally use your, um, your grated Parm. Okay. While we're talking about the grated it's a trick that I do with my students when they come into my summer camp and they're with me. One of the challenges that they have is you see how the, the ingredients are up at the top. Most recipe authors list the ingredients in the order in which they're used. Not all the time, but most of the time. And then below that is all of our directions. Here's the trouble that uh, that kids and even a lot of inexperienced adults will do. They'll read the first couple of directions, but then once they get going, they're in a groove, right? And then they just keep going down the, the ingredients list and they're pouring this in and that in, and they don't realize that there's a very specific process to go through in your recipe. You, and a lot of recipes, you don't just dump everything in one bowl and stir it up and it's all good, okay? So the little trick that I like to do, and if I'm doing, especially if like Thanksgiving dinner when I'm baking like four things, I'll go through and I've got my, my pencil and I'm going to look at the first, I'm going to look through my directions. Um, so number two is, oh sorry, number three is when we're gonna mix a lot of ingredients together. So water, honey, olive oil, yeast, salt, and one cup of flour is all gonna go in at once. So I'm gonna circle on my direction or on my ingredients, water, honey, oil, yeast, salt, and flour, and then I'm gonna actually, because that flour, see in the ingredients, it says three and a half to four cups. I'm only gonna use one cup of flour to start off with. I'm just gonna make myself a little note, one cup, um, one cup for step three, okay? So that's just a quick note so that when I'm going through there and, and I'm in my groove and I'm not noticing it, I don't accidentally put all three and a half cups of flour in my in my mixer because tell me what's gonna happen. Somebody tell me what happens when you put too much flour in at one time. Anybody know? I'm gonna give you a second because um, I think there's a there's like a one minute time delay when we're live like this. Um, so. I'm going to move my stuff out of the way while I give you 
um, a moment to answer my question. I want to make sure you can see everything that I'm doing here. Flower fireworks. I love the way you describe that. Yes, flower fireworks. You can also, I like to call it a flower facial, right? Because not only does it go all up in the air, but it gets all in your face and everything. But I really love that um, description, Laura. Um, so only one cup at a time. Okay, so did everybody circle your ingredients? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, and then the rest is kind of one by one. So we'll, um, that, that's easier to keep track of because you're not just mixing it in the bowl. Okay. All right. So I'm going to set that aside for just a second. And I want to go through, um, you want to have a baking sheet. The recipe says parchment paper, but um, I like to use a Silpat mat so that we can um, reduce waste, right? So I've got my baking sheet. If you've got parchment paper, that is just fine. If you don't have either, then um, just get some spray and um, spray the, make sure you spray your pan really well, okay? So I'm just gonna set that back there for a moment. And other things I've got is, I've got some measuring spoons and measuring cups. We're going to chop up our, pop, our pepperoni into small pieces. So I've got a cutting board and I've got a sharp knife, but if you are not normally allowed to use a sharp knife, we are not going to go through a full knife safety class. That's going to be another video that you can watch that goes through the whole knife safety. I'm going to show you how you use it. But in this case, if you are not 100% proficient in using a sharp knife, you can totally do uh, today's chopping of just the pepperoni with a butter knife. So promise me, everybody promise me that um, that you are going to be safe, okay? And I see Megan says, um, poof. Yes, poof. It all goes poof. Now, I know Megan is mom, so tell me what your name is. Um, and you know what? When you're just on, I just have to say this. When you are just on the internet, when you're not like in a private, this is a private class. There's only five of us here. Your parents know who I am. Don't ever give your name out on the internet. Um, it's to you're totally safe telling me that right, um, right now. So ju that's just a little social media safety tip for you. Okay, so I've got my knife and my chopping board, uh, my measuring cups. I've got a drink of water close by. Oh, because I talk a lot and then I always spill it down the front of me. I got a wet washcloth handy because let me tell you what, my we're I'm in my home kitchen right now, and my kids cannot seem to keep the honey off the outside of the honey container. It's always sticky and gross. So I've got a wet washcloth handy, and I've got a dry dish towel. Um, not one of the fancy ones, right, that you hang up and deck for decorative. We want one that we can really wipe our wipe our hands off. Okay, that's it. Any questions before we get started? Getting excited. All right. I don't see any questions, but I'm I'll keep an eye on it. So I've got right here, I've got my iPad that just shows me the comments. Okay, so we're what we're gonna start off with is um, if you haven't washed your hands, go ahead and wash your hands. Right now my nose itches, so I'm gonna be really careful to itch my nose with my arm like that so that if you have to touch your hair or your face or anything, you wanna just pop over and wash your hands. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, everything is food safe. So we are going to um, measure out a little bit of pepperoni pepperoni and we're going to chop it up we need half a cup of pepperoni so i'm just going to take a little bunch at a time and i'm going to put my half a cup measuring cup in front of me and just a quick lesson when i'm holding my knife i'm holding it 
like I would hold um, a torch, right? My thumb is down. My thumb is not up. My pointer finger is not up. I am gripping that like I would grip a pole, okay? And this is my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite knife. It, this, last, this knife will last me my entire lifetime. Um, it's a Wustoff. They're super expensive, but when you get a little bit older, they're great things. Um, they're great housewarming gifts when you get older. Your parents might have some. There's other brands that are really wonderful, but this is a Santoku knife. So it's a Japanese cut. And what that means is see how it's got a little rocker like that? So it makes it really nice to chop things like this. Now, when I'm chopping things, there's two things that's important. I always want to keep the point down on my cutting board. So I'm gonna go up and down. Notice my finger's not up like that and neither is my thumb, okay? The other thing is I'm holding my hands at a claw. We call this the bear claw, okay? I do not want to cut off the tips of my fingers. Nobody would notice it in your pepperoni pizza rolls, so don't feed the fingers along with your pepperoni, okay? So we don't really need to mince this into, and mince means really, really small pieces, but we do want them to be smaller so that it's not, um, so that it's not so big. So I'm just gonna chop these up into small, small pieces. So I'm getting it in little strips. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn my board and I'm gonna go the other direction. When you're chopping like this, it's totally okay to put your, to put your hand on top of it, to give, especially to give you a little bit of control. Okay. Now, notice I'm not gonna use my knife to scrape across there. I'm going to pick this up and put that in there and measure out how much we have. So I'm a little bit shy of half a cup. So I'm just going to take a couple more pieces of pepperoni and I'm going to chop these. Oh, we'll put that one back. And then sideways and then just a little bit more there we go there is our half cup of pepperoni now for what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this aside for now but while our dough is rising we're going to clean up a little bit so i don't i i like to clean up as we go along but in this case, we're just gonna set this aside. So very carefully, I'm holding the knife on top of my board and I'm setting it over behind me out of the way. I don't want any sharp knives in the way when I'm cooking. So super, super, super safe around the knife. Okay, one of the other things that kids always forget to do is they forget to close their packages and then your food inside gets dried out or spoiled or icky. So make sure that you've got a good seal if you've got a Ziploc bag or if it wasn't a zip, then when we're done, we'll make sure that we wrap it up if you've got any, because you probably have some pepperoni left over. Okay, I'm gonna put that back. Okay. Uh, all right, Laura says I'm ready. Awesome, thumbs up. Uh, hi, this is Peyton. Hi, Peyton, how are you? Peyton says she's ready. Sweet, okay. So we've got our pepperoni chopped up. Um, let's see, I don't think there's anything else that we need to prep, so let's go ahead and get um, ready. If you do not have a stand mixer, that's totally fine. You can do this with a, a electric meter or electric mixer. You just need to make sure that you have the dough hook for your electric mixer and then a bowl. Um, so that's, that's the only difference. Um, I have this nice little um, shield 
that keeps the flour out. But um, I'm, we're going to go ahead and start measuring. So we're going to add the water. So I'm adding my half a cup of water very gently in my bowl. And then the honey. So here's a little trick about measuring out honey. So I need a tablespoon. And so I'm going to take just a titch of baking spray and I'm going to spray the inside of my um, the inside of my measuring spoon. You can do the same if you have like a half a cup of, of honey that you have to measure out for a recipe like this week's challenge has homemade granola bars and so there's syrup or you can use honey and so you can spray the inside of your um, measuring cup and then watch this when you pour your honey in oh it's so thick and yummy i love honey then when i pour it out of the spoon it Oh, top of my measuring spoon went in there. You, it just slides right out. See, you can. I don't know if you can see that. The camera here is pretty far away, but it just slid right out. You didn't have to scrape it out or lose half of your honey while you were, um, you know, in your spoon. So I love that little trick. All right, then I am actually going to wipe off the honey. These are all little tricks that I promise you, if you show your parents that you can be responsible about all of these little things, wiping the honey off of um, the outside of the honey container, keeping everything um, clean as you go along, and most importantly, leave your kitchen in better shape than when you started cooking, all of those things are gonna show the responsibility that your parents are gonna to need to see and to, in order to let you cook more on your own in the kitchen. So I promise you, all of this extra effort is gonna be worth it, promise. Okay, so I've got our honey, and now we need two tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm not gonna worry about the honey that's still in there. I'm just gonna pour, I'm gonna pour the olive oil right over that sticky honey bit that's left over, two tablespoons of olive oil. And four teaspoons of instant yeast. All right, so I'm gonna open up this package. Let me get some scissors. And I'm going to measure four teaspoons. Let me make sure that I have an adjustable, one of those adjustable uh, measuring spoons. So I'm going to make sure that we get that this is really accurate. Okay, so there's one. And these little packages aren't like an exact, that's two. And here's like the two, that's not, that's kind of half. So this, a lot of these packages are two and a half teaspoons. So I'm gonna cut open my second one very carefully and finish filling. That's three. And there's four. All right. And I'm going to add my salt, which is one and a quarter. So I'm going to go one and then change right there to a quarter. All right, let me double check to see if I have any questions. Everybody's good. Looks like everybody's good. All right. 
All right, so another thing I tell my students to do a lot of times when they're new is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check it off. So I've got the water, honey, oil, yeast, I did the salt, and now I need, oh, remember, just the one cup of flour. So let's talk about measuring flour a little bit. My favorite trick is using the flat part of the knife. So when we scoop out our flour, we don't want to press it down. This isn't brown sugar, okay? We want to get a nice, loose, let's see, you can't see that, can you? Let's move this over. We want a nice, loose scoop of it, and then I'm going to slide it away from me. But notice I'm holding my measuring cup over the flour container, right? I'm not doing it over here or over the floor. I'm doing it over the container, okay? And I'm gonna slide that. That's gonna give me a nice, flat, even perfect cup of flour, okay? And then I'm gonna tap that in there. I like to make, oh no, see, even I, look, I spilled flour all over my mouse. That's bad. Okay, I'm gonna leave this measuring cup out. I'm gonna get rid of these ingredients that I've already used. Out of my way, out of my way. Check off my cup of flour, check. All right, so um, let's see. For the dough in an electric sand mixer, fitted with the dough hook, make sure you've got the dough hook. That's this, that's this spirally thing, right? There we go. And, oh, the other thing we got to, let's go ahead and preheat our oven at 425 degrees. All right. Thumbs up, everybody? Okay. Now I'm going to lift my mixer up. And I'm gonna put it on the lowest setting. Just to get that, the initial ingredients all mixed together, then we're going to start um, adding the additional flour. So I had a brain fart there for a minute. Nice and slow. So this takes a minute. While that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure my second cup of flour. Nice and flat. It may be a little bit hard for you to hear me while the mixer's on. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start tapping very gently. My second cup of flour. Mm, it's starting to smell like bread. Is yours smelling like bread? You see. All right. Oh. All right. Let's go for our third cup. Nice and loose, we're not packing it down. This is cup number three. This is why we cut down the video um, afterwards because if you're just, you know, sometimes you're just sitting around and you're just watching YouTube. So it's, it, this is where it'll get really, really, really boring. Um, watching dough mix, right? Or, you know, it's like watching water boil. There's nothing exciting about it. Uh, so this is the part that we'll cut out is, is all of the mix, mix, mix. Um, Mine's looking pretty good. I'm 
going to tap the side. If you need to stop it and grab a spatula, a rubber scraper, where's my scraper still? Because I've got some flour stuck on the side, so I'm going to scrape that down just a little bit. Get that flour on the side. Now I'm going to turn it back on. All right, and then I'm going to measure out about half a cup. This doesn't have to be exact. From this point, we're just going to add flour in based on the consistency of our dough. So my dough is still really wet. So I'm going to add in just a half a cup. If we were doing something like French macarons, which is what we're doing in class next week, then we would be weighing it with a scale down to the gram because the ratio of almond flour to your meringue is a precise, precise uh, measurement. So we would weigh it down to the gram. And this still looks very wet, so I'm going to add, I'm going to scoop up about half a cup, but... I'm going to tap it in very, very slowly. So let me know if you guys have questions. So the, the, we want this to start looking like dough. So we know we're done when the dough starts sticking more to the hook and it's completely come away from the sides of the bowl. So I'm gonna stop again because I have a bunch of flour stuck here on the sides. So I'm gonna scrape down my sides. Mine is starting to, definitely starting to stick, but it still needs more. So I'm gonna let that let this go for a minute. Notice I'm always turning off the mixer before I stick anything in it. That's super important. That can be a disaster. You can get flower fireworks or break your spatula or even hurt your hand. So we don't want to do that. Okay, I mine still looks a little wet, so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Really get that up on top here. Uh, once the dough starts to stick to to your um, dough hook, if you and it looks like it's a good dough consistency, and you've got some flour on the outside, that's totally fine. Um, it's not a perfect measurement, but you do want to make sure that it's at the right consistency. I'm going to add a little more flour. There 
we go. I'm starting to get there. Mine took just a little bit at a little bit extra flour than normal. It's kind of a, a wet, damp, dreary day here. to stick in a ball but when I went to touch it it still was pretty gooey so I'm still gonna add a little bit more flour because I the dough should not um, it should feel not quite like play-doh but you don't want it to be it need you need to be able to form it <laughs> Any questions? Everybody just watching their dough? I'm getting dough all over my iPad. Laura, yours is almost done. All right, let's see how mine looks. No, mine is not. So see how it's kind of sticky like this? That's still too sticky. So I'm actually going to put more flour in mine. There we go. There we go. So what I have here is a dough ball. Okay. Now I'm going to add, take a little bit of my cornstarch and I'm going to sprinkle it here on my very clean counter. And we're going to need this just a little bit. Um, so that we finish up because the mixer does a lot of the work for us, but we just want to finish it off with a little elbow grease. And I'm going to get this all out of my way now. 
will slide this out of the way. So the reason I put cornstarch down instead of flour, you could put flour down, but when I want to things to not stick to the um, my countertop, then I use cornstarch because when cornstarch comes in contact with moisture, it just dissolves. Flour becomes goopy. So I want to, I, I like to use cornstarch. I'm doing that whether I'm doing fondant, anything where I'm kneading like this and I don't want it to stick um, to the counter. All right. My, my, Peyton, if your dough is really sticky, keep adding flour to it, okay? All right. Who else has dough that looks like this? Tell me in your chat. I know, Peyton, that you've got um, maybe some more flour. Okay. Mine is ready. So I'm just going to make it in this little ball like this. All right. And I'm going to stick it in the, a bowl. You can put it back in your mixer bowl if you want. Uh, I'm just going to grab a bowl. So I'm going to put, oh, that's not too, that's not big enough. What was I thinking? All right, so I'm going to put this there, and then I'm going to get a clean towel. You can use clean wrap, anything you want, and I'm going to cover that and put this aside. Don't worry if you're still uh, if you're still mixing. No worries. I'm going to set a timer, and um, we're going to clean up a little bit while our dough rises a little bit. Set timer for 10 minutes. Your timer is set for 10 minutes. I have an Aussie Siri. Isn't that cool? I love that. Okay. So while that's happening, I'm going to keep my bowl of cornstarch because we're going to use that when we actually, when we slice up our pizza rolls. And um, what I'm going to do now while... Um, while we're waiting for the dough to rise, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm definitely, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my mixing bowl with all that dough in it. I'm going to fill that with water. And then I'm going to come back and just make sure that you guys don't have any questions, okay? Be right back. Definitely going to have to get like a little food protection something for my iPad.
All right. All right, let me know how you're doing. Doing good? This is the hard part of a class. I can't see any of your lovely faces. All right. Peyton, how's your dough doing? Laura, yours is resting. Awesome. You set a timer for 10 minutes. I'll assume that you did. Are you cleaning up? Cleaning. Just keep cleaning. Just keep cleaning. All right, don't need this. What do I need? We need our pepperoni still, our pizza sauce, our mozzarella, and our parm. Okay. Let's see how many minutes we have. I still have five minutes. Five minutes. Yes, I'm cleaning, yay! Okay, let's see, what can we do while we're waiting? Still cleaning, okay. Peyton, let me know how, how it's going. If you can, if you've got dough all over your hands, no worries, it's okay. Now it's dry. Okay, awesome. Just started resting for Megan Lee. Okay. I don't know, is there anybody else that's live? I know there were some people that registered for class but couldn't make it live and they're gonna watch the replay. Um, so if you are, if you are, and I, cause I can't tell unless you actually comment at me. Um, so let me know when you're done cleaning. I'm going to kind of just talk to you a little bit about our classes this summer, um, while we're waiting. So next week we have, let me pull up our schedule. Uh, next week we have... French macarons. Who's made French macarons before? Tell me in the chat. Um, let me pull, I think it'll be easier to pull it up from my phone. All right, let's take a look at we got one macaron. Okay, how did they turn out? Were they thumbs up? They all good? You're happy with the way they turned out? Laura's made French macarons. Okay.
I'm looking for my list. Week one. All right, here we go. All the way down at the bottom. Okay, so next week, French macarons. Um, they turned out great. Okay, awesome. We will, um, I'll take a poll of everybody that's in class because if everybody's made them and they've turned out, then we'll do a more advanced recipe than just the basic um, recipe. So they were amazing. Awesome. My Peyton says mine is fine now. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we have French macarons next week and then there's no class the last week in june or the fourth of july week so we have two week break and then we come back from the fourth of july holiday we're going to do a breakfast crescent ring yummy so that's um a little similar to um i think because the dough is um is like a, a crescent roll dough so that will be good. Um, we could also, I'll poll everybody again to see whether you'd rather make cinnamon roll, advanced classes, please. Okay, let me just make sure that everybody's on the same boat as you are, um, Laura. Um, Laura, are you done cleaning? Let's see how much time we have. I've got, my timer's about to go off. So mine has rested long enough, but I know some of you started later than me. So we'll just keep chatting for a minute. Okay. So would you, almost done cleaning, no worries. Um, so one of the questions is, would you rather do the breakfast crescent ring or uh, cinnamon rolls in class in July? So that's one question. We don't have to figure that out now, just throwing that out there. Then after that is um, Harry Potter. And we're going to do an edible sorting hat. That is super, super fun. I love that. We make the hat with Rice Krispie treats, and then we cover it with fondant and decorate it. And you can either, um, you can make a cake on your own and like a butterbeer cake recipe and um, put the, the edible hat on top, or you can just plate it nicely on a plate and that is super fun. Laura says cinnamon rolls. Okay, we'll see what everybody else says. Uh, Megan says cinnamon rolls, okay. Then let's see, after that, when your timers go off, let me know so I stop talking and we can move on. Let's see, so after Harry Potter edible sorting hat, it doesn't really rise, It this is just gonna set a little bit. Uh, after Harry Potter is um, homemade spaghetti and meatballs. So this is where we're gonna make a really yummy spaghetti sauce that you will use for the absolute rest of your life and the homemade meatballs to go along with that. I know that you think that that's maybe a little basic recipe, but the trick here is in the nuances and really having a recipe that is that is just your absolute go-to recipe, um, and that's going to be a lot of that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. After that is oh, I've been waiting for this one a mirror glaze cake so as we get closer to that we'll talk about what colors you want do you want to do a galaxy um mirror glaze or what do you want to do there so that's going to be super fun uh the last week is baked enchiladas not the last week the the week in august um 
Peyton, you say it's really dry. Are you? Is it not like a, a ball of dough? So uh, week nine in, uh, it's not sticking together. Okay, put a little water on your hands and, and knead it, and the, the water will um, soak that up a little bit. When you say it's not sticking together, is it crumbly? If it's if it's just not at all, um, and it's still in your bowl, add a teaspoon of of water back into it and let the mixer make it back into a dough ball. You, you've got too much flour now. Sometimes you get too much and you gotta add a little water back in. Okay, so week eight is uh, baked enchiladas, and then if we have time, then um, we can also do uh, baked churros along with that, because enchiladas um, isn't really a lengthy recipe. Um, and then the last week is a zebra cake. We You can either do a <clears throat> um, you can do a rainbow zebra cake or you can do a just a chocolate and vanilla or you can just you could do two colors you know a, a light and a color or a chop a chocolate and a color that's up to you and then week 10 all the way to the end that week is a um that is our grand finale week. So everybody that's participating in our challenge, all every weekly winner in, that's participating in our challenge will get to participate in the grand finale, um, which will be my girl Paige uh, from the Kids Baking Championship. Um, she is going to um, share our her her winning chocolate cherry cake recipe. Um, as uh, as our like our grand finale in August, I'm super excited about that. Okay, everybody, good. Let me know if your timer has not gone off. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to move on. Okay, I'm going to move this way out of the way. Okay. All right. Where's our... Okay. Timer hasn't gone off. No worries. This part is actually really easy. Not that the first part was hard, but if you've never made dough from scratch before, then sometimes you just don't know how to get it to the right consistency. So my dough didn't rise very much. This is not quick, um, quick rise yeast. Doesn't produce the same rise that in only 10 minutes that um, that it does with regular yeast that you leave for, for two hours. It just doesn't have the time to do it. I am gonna cut this in half using my knife. Okay, Peyton, you're going to have to just add a tablespoon of water and, and keep kneading. And so add a tablespoon of water and then knead for like a minute 
and then add another tablespoon if it, but do it only one tablespoon at a time. Okay. So, Payton said, <laughs> delayed response. Cinnamon rolls, you wanted to make sure you got that in there, right? All right, so I'm just gonna flatten this out on my parchment sheet, and I want it to be in a square, or not a square, a rectangle. You could use a roller if you wanted. Um, want this to be kind of thin. I want it to spread the whole length. That's a good thickness is, you know, to get it kind of this width here. The short width of the of the baking pan. Sorry, I'm not being very clear right now. So I just keep patting it till it stretches out. I want it to be nice and even all the way around because you don't want to take a bite of your, your pizza roll where you've got super thick bread on one side and no bread on the other side. So we want this to be Nice and even. Make sure this is, if there's any holes in it, you can kind of, oh, let me move this a little bit so that you can see. So sometimes I get a little hole in my dough. I'm just gonna pinch that together. But there you go, nice and flat. So what I'm gonna do is, since we've got two rolls, I'm gonna go through this twice so that um, those of you that uh, are still waiting for your dough, then you have, um, you'll be able to go through it with me. Okay, Peyton, I, um, I, I'm so sweet, I know how hard this is because I can't see your dough. Um, see if you can use some more words to describe. Is it crumbly? Is it in a ball, but it isn't? but it's kind of wet in some parts and dry in others. T kind of try to use more words to describe what's going on. Um, and then I'll see what I can do to help you, okay? If not, I'll get on, uh, uh, we'll, we'll figure something out afterwards. Okay, I've got this all laid out. I'm gonna take my pizza sauce and here's a little trick for when it's really hard to get a jar of sauce open. You're gonna grip it really tight in your hand and you're gonna turn it upside down and you're just gonna give it a good, did you hear that? Listen, you're just, you're hitting it on the bottom and it's putting all of the pressure against the seal of that and then when you try to open it, it's super easy to open. Now, some of them take a more doing than that. It doesn't mean that I've done that for every single jar. I've definitely had to go to my dad or my husband to open that up. So uh, I'm going to grab my measuring cup. What did I do with it? There we go. And so I'm taking just a one-third cup because I think, honestly, um, it says two cups of pizza sauce, so that's for both pizzas. But I think one cup is an awful lot for this. So I'm just gonna do one third of a cup at a time and see how that goes. So I'm just gonna pour it right there on my dough and I'm gonna use the back of it, of my cup to spread it around. Definitely more than one third. 
So there's my second third. And see, I think that second third is plenty. I don't, it's totally up to you. If you want really saucy, goopy um, pizza rolls, that's totally fine. Um, I'm actually going to add just a little bit. Not quite a full cup now, but almost like seven-eighths of a cup. This is, again, where your creativity comes from. It doesn't matter whether you're painting or you're doing an acrylic pour, which I'm totally hoping to do an acrylic. Um, oh, paint, your dough is good. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, I totally want to do a fluid acrylic pour with everybody, um, you know, that's kind of into that kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't matter what your craft is, right? Your craft is whatever it is that you like to create. Um, so um, being creative is just a way of expressing yourself, and it's just really, really important. And um, this is a perfect way. So um, some of you may like more spaghetti sauce, and some of you may like less. So no worries. All right. So we got our sauce. And now I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to sprinkle the mozzarella sauce, or the mozzarella sauce, <laughs> goofy me, the mozzarella cheese. So I'm just going to, I honestly, with this kind of thing, I don't measure it. I just grab a handful and I just sprinkle it on top. I definitely use my measurements when I'm purchasing my ingredients because I want to make sure that I have enough of everything. Who, who, tell me who has been in the middle of a recipe and, oh my gosh, did not have enough ingredients because they didn't check everything first. Me, totally done that. Um, so we always, that's why we always double check that at the beginning of class. This is an example of where I actually like more cheese than most people think. So I am just patting that down a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more over here on the side. And now I'm going to add some pepperoni. Now remember, only use half of your pepperoni because you got another pizza roll here to go through. All right. How's everybody doing? I'm going to assume that you're doing good because this is not a tricky part. All right. There's my pizza roll. And we're going to put, uh, if you want to put some parm on the inside, I do. Um, you can, let's see. These packages are always so hard to get into. Goodness gracious. All right. So I'm just going to add a little parm on the inside of mine because I love cheese, especially love Parmesan cheese. All right. There we go. Now, here's the trick with our pizza rolls is we are going to roll it this long way. And I'm going to kind of stick my fingers up under the edge so that it's easy. I'm gonna get all the way to along there before I start rolling. And this, this first lip is kind of tricky. Sometimes it helps to have your knife to kind of loosen it. Okay, so here I'm just pressing this up, kind of up and over, and starting to roll it. And it will get easier as we go along. Mine is kind of sticking to my parchment paper. I wish I had, um, I'm actually gonna turn this around so now I can roll it towards me and get my fingers under there. I wish I had sprayed that a little bit. All right. Got it all rolled up on the side there. And I want to pinch this on the end. So I'm going to kind of slide it around here so I can get at it 
and I'm gonna pinch the end together. And there's gonna be a lot of sauce and stuff that's gonna come out, that's okay. But I'm gonna pinch that edge. Can you see how I'm doing that? Pinching this all together. This is why I have a wet rag, right? All right. Now, I'm going to slice that and dip it in my cornstarch. So I'm going to do like a one inch slice. And because those stuck there a little bit, I'm going to put some spray my parchment there. Okay, so I'm very carefully just going to do a one inch cut there. And I'm going to dip this in my cornstarch. And that's going to kind of hold everything together. And there we go. There's my first pizza roll. Definitely going to need more cornstarch than that. So I'm going to shake that up. Let's see, do another cut. And I'm, when I pick this pizza roll up, I'm picking it up on both sides. I've got one hand on one side. The other hand is on the, is kind of on that seam. And so I'm kind of holding it together because if you don't, it's going to kind of all come apart as you pick it up. All right. I'm just going to keep going here. Let me know if you have any questions. And these look super duper yummy. The beautiful thing about pizza rolls is they don't have to be perfect. All right, I'm only going to put three across because those are going to puff out. And I need more cornstarch, so I'm going to wash my hands off before, because I don't want to put my dirty hands in the cornstarch uh, container. So give me one second. Okay. I'm also grabbing a towel because I made a mess here. I'm going to wipe off my space here. All right. Now, cornstarch. Okay, that should get me through. Okay, here we go. Here's another, another slice. This is one of those things that gets easier with every one. Your first pizza roll looks terrible, just like your first batch of macarons probably weren't perfect. But then by the time you get to your last one, it's usually doing a lot better. I think I stuffed mine too much. Anybody else stuff theirs too much? I get kind of overzealous with my cheese. But this is one of those things that is not a perfection. Nothing is ever a perfection. We learn so much more from our mistakes than we do from perfection. That's what I love about cooking is that you can try something and then if it doesn't turn out right, you just have to think about 
what could I do differently next time? Sometimes you know exactly what happened and you can just do it again. Sometimes you have to talk to somebody that maybe has done it before and, um, and then you can just try again, but we don't ever, ever, ever give up. That would be silly. We're just gonna learn from our mistakes and keep going. Oh, that was a big one. All right. I think I'm gonna get three more out of this batch, which is gonna be plenty, I think, for this pan. So we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. All right. I wish I could see you and talk to you. Maybe, maybe next time we'll do it. We won't do it on YouTube. Maybe we'll do it on a different platform where I, where you could turn your video on and I could see you. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'm on my last one for this batch. Yumbo. Oh my goodness. All right, before I do put that last batch in, I don't know if you can see this, but the end of my pan is super messy from cutting it all up because I got really overzealous. So I'm gonna clean up the edge of this before I put my last piece down because I don't want all that cheese and sauce baking into uh, my pan and burning and then making everything else smell like burned cheese. That's not yummy at all. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna spread this out a little bit now. So I could have put three more on the pan, but I'm gonna wait because I don't want to because I have to start a new the new batch. All right, I'm gonna wash up my hands. And then I'm going to take a look at the comments and uh, just see if you have any questions. Oh my goodness, those look so good. I'm so excited. I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna grab my Parmesan. Now this fresh Parmesan that I have is long strips. So I'm gonna kind of crumble it as I, as I um, spread it on top. Just gonna crumble it right in my hands. Just so it's a little bit smaller pieces. Parmesan, Parmesan is just a wonderful, wonderful food. I love it so much. And it just, it easily crumbles because it's a hard cheese. It, it easily crumbles in your hands. So I'm getting a little cheesy. Like the Cheetos guy, right? What did he say? It ain't easy being cheesy. Good thing my son is not here. My son is 10 and he does not think that I'm funny at all. I'm a huge embarrassment to him. I bet you guys feel the same way about your parents. All right. I don't see any questions coming up. I'm sure you've got food all over your hands. So definitely don't turn, you know, touch whatever device you're watching me from. And... There we go. All right, let's just double check our recipe, make sure I didn't forget anything. 
Uh, once while the pizza rolls are placed on the baking sheet, sprinkle evenly with Parmesan cheese and bake for 15 to 20 minutes until golden. All right, 15 to 20 minutes. My oven is on 425. And in they go. I'm going to set my timer. So when we have a recipe that says 15 to 20 minutes, I always set my timer for the lower amount and then I check it, okay? So I'm going to set this to 15 minutes and then we'll check it. So when you guys are have got your first batch in the oven, go ahead and wash your hands and then come back to the chat and, so that we can talk a little bit about how your fat first batch went and any questions that you have before we get started on our second batch. Okie dokie, Smokey. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. This is where music would be nice. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, so one of the things to keep in mind is we have been on this class for almost an hour and a half now. Once you've made these and you're making them again, this isn't going to take nearly as long, right? Um, it takes longer when we're cooking together as a group than it does when you know what you're doing and you're just, oh, I'm going to mix my dough. That's going to take 10 minutes. I'm going to roll it out. And I'm going to put my sauce, you know, exactly how much sauce to use, how much um, pe uh, pepperoni, how much mozzarella cheese, you roll it up, and you know, slice it. The whole thing will take less than a half an hour to prep it, and then you pop it in the oven. It's This is not normally a two-hour deal, except when we're in a class and we're doing all kinds of extra stuff, right? We talked about knife safety. We talked about some different um, tricks on how to open up a jar, all different kinds. Of, we went through all of our ingredients and our equipment at the beginning. So classes take longer. So don't think that because this took us, um, well, by the time we're done, we'll be at probably two hours. Uh, it doesn't normally take that long. You also, uh, you probably have two baking sheets. So we could have gotten out a second baking sheet, which I'm going to do in a minute, and put. you can put both sheets in the oven at the same time. This isn't like cake. Um, so uh, that, let me see, do we have any comments? No comments yet. Um, I'm just going to keep talking while you guys uh, finish up your rolls and, and um, finish up your rolls and get them, uh, in the oven and wash your hands. That's what our goal is going to be in this little hiatus. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenge this week. So this week's challenge has uh, three recipes in it. It's got the, the pizza rolls that we're making today. And make sure that when you're all done, you take a picture of it and you post it on Instagram so that you can win a prize. So I'm going to have a prize for all of the Instagram posts for the challenge every week. Now, there are a whole bunch of people that joined the challenge but did not join us in this class today. So there's right now there's probably almost 30 families, and each family um, may have more than one child. So there's quite a few um, kids, not like a 1,000 kids. So don't worry about that. It's pretty pretty easy um, chance to win. Um, so each week we'll 
do a prize. And each week there are three recipes that you can try. So you can enter three times, one for each recipe. So today counts as one. Our, so take a picture. And then when you post it on Instagram, you have to do two things. You have to tag me, uh, which is at the kids cooking school, I think. It's in your email. And you have to use the hashtag summer cooking challenge week one. All of this is in your email. Um, <clears throat> so post your um, post your photos, tag me, use the hashtag. And then I have a little app that picks randomly picks a winter, a winner. The prizes are not based on how well you did. It's based on you actually trying uh, something that maybe you've ne never made before. Um, and then, like I said, the winner each week um, is um, the winner each week will be either a custom apron. So I have an apron and I have one of those cricket machines. And so we're going to do a, a cute design on the apron or uh, we'll have a, a, um, um, a mug like this, like a water, not like, like a water bottle um, that's uh, customized, uh, both of them with your name on it. So they're fun prizes. And then the grand prize at the end of the summer is a full year of these online classes with me and a stand mixer. Um, so Megan is asking, and Megan, is that your name or is that your mom's name? I think it's your mom's name. I've been calling you Megan this whole time. So the trick to open up the jar was I hold it in my hand, I turn it upside down, and I slam my fist against it, and you'll hear a little pop on the jar lid. Okay. So we got a couple of I got it's. And by the way, you guys can chat to each other in the chat, um, ask each other questions. So if one of you asks a question of me and I'm busy teaching um, or I don't notice that there's a that there's a comment, you can answer each other's questions if you know, you know, and learn from each other, not just from me. Um, so. Peyton, it says, I got it, me, I'm good. Um, that was like 15 minutes ago, so. Um, I'll keep, so what I haven't heard is, are, are you done with your first batch? That's what I wanna hear in the chat. Are you done with your first batch? So I'm gonna keep talking about the challenge until um, until I see some, I'm done. Okay, so this week we've got, so take your picture, we talked about that. We also have lasagna roll-ups, so if you want to enter with another chance to win, you can make lasagna roll-ups on your own and um, take a picture of it and, you know, plate it up nice and take a picture. We want to practice our food photography, that's super fun and um, post it on Instagram, same thing, tag me, hashtag summer cooking challenge week one. And then if you decide to do the third recipe, that's homemade granola bars. And in that recipe, I love the ingredients that, so Lee, one of my favorite food blockers, Lisa from 100 Days of Real Food, she uses all high quality, really good for you ingredients. However, sometimes that gets a little bit expensive. So in something like granola, you can, that's where you can really use your creativity and use whatever ingredients you like. So if you don't like chopped almonds, you can replace it with chopped, chopped peanuts or chopped pecans or walnuts or macadamia nuts or all of them or any combination of the above. Oh my gosh, I'm, I know I want to make some granola. Um, so you can do that. If you don't like chai seeds, you don't have to use chai seeds. If you want to add raisins or chocolate chips, you can do, you can do any of that. That's the beauty of granola. 
The trick though with that is you want to use the same ratio of, that we've got in the recipe. So for example, if you've got two cups of dry goods and half a cup of maple syrup or half a cup of honey, and you wanna add more of the nuts or you wanna add some rolled oats or whatever it is that you wanna add, you just wanna make sure that ratio of whatever the sticky binding ingredient to the dry ingredients, that ratio is the same. Um, so, cause if you just add more nuts and you don't add more of your maple syrup or your honey, then it's, it's not going to stick together. It's just, it, it'll be granola. It just won't press down into a granola bar that you can then cut up. The other thing that I suggest is when you cut them up, lay them out on parchment paper on a, on a baking sheet and pop them in the freezer for five or 10 minutes and then take them out and wrap them in parchment or wax paper. Don't wrap them in foil. You could wrap them in cling wrap, um, but I would wrap them individually or they will stick, stick together. Okay. I do not see any, um, any questions yet. So um, if you've done all three recipes for the week, then You've got all three of your pictures in there uh, posted on Instagram. And so then you have three chances to win. So if there are other kids that haven't done that, then you're going to have a, a greater chance to win. So the more you cook, uh, the more you have fun in the kitchen, the more prizes, more chances you have to win prizes um, each week. Um, it's not going to be the same prize. We will definitely have a water bottle once, more than once and an apron more than once, but we've also got some really fun um, kitchen gadgets that we're gonna give away, and um, it's gonna be super fun, a super fun summer of cooking in the kitchen. And all right, Laura says her first batch is in the oven. Awesome, um, I'm assuming you're, you've been able to kind of wash your hands so that you could type. So we're waiting for Peyton and um, Peyton and Megan. Those are the only three that have been commenting. Um, so let's see if I can tell how many people are on. Some messages, all right. Live chat, top chat, live. Have to learn how to do that. How to see how many people are live. Maybe I can't tell. There are some things that you can only do from your desktop when you don't have like a thousand subscribers. So since we just started this summer, um, we don't have a thousand subscribers yet. So I would love it if you would, um, you know, tell your friends about our challenge. It's super fun um, to uh, do it with a friend. So if you have a friend come over and um, do a challenge, uh, uh, one of the recipes with you, and you take a picture of you and your friend while you're cooking, then that's another way uh, to win. So all different kinds of ways to win. And um, okay, Laura, since you're done, tell me how it went. How, what, um, now that we're going to do a second batch of them, um, what would you do differently? Would you, for example, would you use less sauce? Would you use less mozzarella cheese? Would you use more? Would you make your dough thinner? Tell me a little bit about what you, you're going to do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to spread my dough out. A, a little bit more so that my dough is thinner and I'm not going to use as much sauce or as much mozzarella cheese. So there isn't so much that
that was kind of oozing out the side. I always, you know, I'm sprinkling it on. I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be so good. And so I add more and more and more. And as you can see, when we were done rolling it, more is not always better. <laughs> in some places it is, and in this case, it is not. <laughs> So I'm going to use less of that. So Laura says, I would make my dough thinner and use a tiny bit less sauce. Okay, that's perfect. That's why we do things uh, multiple times so we can learn along the way. We almost never do anything perfectly the first time. That's so super rare. I've been doing these, um, let's see if you, I've been doing these acrylic pours. Can you see that? So this is where I just mix up paint um, in different cups and, um, and then I pour it all into a cup and I add some silicone in it. That's what makes these little cells. And I just pour it over my canvas and it makes this really pretty fancy design. I probably did this 10 times before it didn't it didn't turn out like just this mud, all the paint mixed together, it was bad. Uh, okay, my timer is going off, so I am gonna be super safe. I'm gonna use my mittens, of course. Let's see. <laughs> it smells delicious in your house, doesn't it? The great thing about this is, um, you could make these and it could be dinner for tonight or at least part of dinner for tonight. And you want to talk about your mom and dad or whoever you live with is willing to let you do so much more. Have some dinner ready for them when they get home. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, what are you going to make tomorrow? Um, so think about making lasagna roll-ups for dinner one night tonight. All right, my pizza rolls, I'm going to pull them out so you can see them. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to keep them out. I think they're good done. That's just my, that's just my oven. So the way I am, I'm telling, let me get, let me pull them out here. Let me get a little uh, trivet so I can put it in the hot pan here so I can actually talk about it. All right. Okay, so these look white because there's a uh, cornstarch on the outside, but I'm kind of gently picking this up and it's very done on the outside. And I, I want it to be gooey on the inside, but I don't want it to be too gooey. So I'm going to cut one in half and just take a look at the inside and it's definitely breaded all the way through. It is not, it is not doughy. Now it's okay to be chewy and warm, just like a cinnamon roll, right? Like the best cinnamon cinnamon rolls are still just a little bit gooey on the inside. It doesn't taste raw, but it's not as bready as the pieces on the outside. That's what's so yummy about them, right? So I'm going to, because I can't stand it, I'm gonna take a bite, it's gonna be hot. So let's take a look. Also, let's take a look at the underside. We don't want the bottom to burn. So I think if I left them whew, hot, let me get some tongs so I can show you. All right. So here's what the bottom looks like. If we cooked these any longer, it would not, uh, it would start to burn. And I'm gonna actually walk around and I'm gonna show you. 
Hello. Um, okay, so let's see if you can, let me get the other side. You would not believe how much equipment I have set up here in my kitchen so that I can do this with you. Okay, so you can see maybe not so much in the camera, but it's, it's, it's like pizza dough, right? It's, um, it's not doughy. So I'm going to try it. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right. I'm definitely doing less cornstarch on the, on the outside. Definitely doing that. Okay. Super awesome. The other thing I would do is I would add more seasoning to this. I would add, even though the pizza sauce has seasoning to it, I would, I would add a little more Italian. That's just me. I like my seasoning. So if you want to take a little bite of yours to see how it tastes before you do a second batch, then let me know. All right. Megan said, Megan is my mom. My name is Annika. You told me that earlier. I'm so sorry, Annika, 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 Annika. Not Megan. Okay, great. So, okay, everybody. So here's the question. Our, um, our class is over in about 20 minutes. We can do two things. I can totally make another batch with you. Or um, if you want to hang up and do the, the second batch yourself, um, we can totally do that. I'll stay on and run through, um, run through my batch if you want. So tell me before we get started, um, Annika and Peyton, um, if you'll let me know how you're doing and um, and whether your batch is in the oven or um, what's going on there. Um, Peyton, we got Laura and Annika. I think it's just Peyton. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take my pizza rolls off my pan. And let's see. I'm just going to put them on a plate. All right, there we go. I've got these all on a plate now, and now I can make another batch. Let me set these aside and get my trivets back out. Wait, no. Oh. All right. All right, Annika's are in the oven. Annika, what would you do, do differently on your second batch? Anything? I'm gonna, I'm not gonna wash this, but I am gonna kind of dump all the stuff off.
All right. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started on my second batch. I'm going to do this nice and wide. This is not hot anymore. I'm going to move these. This is not. All right. I want to make sure I keep it square. Oh, I said I was going to spray that, didn't I? All right, let's spray that so that rolls up nicely. That is definitely one thing I would do. I think if you're using parchment paper, it's not it's not as sticky. But when you're using uh, when you're using the silpat, it's definitely more sticky. All right, less filling and thinner dough. Yep, me too. I've actually made these quite a few times, um, but I always used a rolling pin, which not everybody has, so I didn't want to require that in this class. And so with a rolling pin, it's a lot easier to um, get the right consistency with a little practice. Okay, so there's my square. Still, let's see if I can thin this out as much as I can. I'm gonna have lots of pizza rolls. Let's uh, text my family, tell them to come eat. Come eat pizza rolls from class. Exclamation. All right, now we've got some sauce. Definitely let us sauce. Look at that funny how the how the the lid is stuck. Oh my goodness. Can't make that stuff up, guys. Can't make it up. All right. So I'm gonna spread that out. I know that I want two of these, but not three. That was for sure. Spreading out my sauce. Next week I'm gonna try some music that I can turn on and off. I think that'll make it more fun. And then if it, if you can't hear me then, then you can just let me know. And then we won't do music again, but I think music would be fun. Life is just better with music, isn't it? My favorite song right now, tell me what your, um, you can tell me later what your favorite song is. My favorite song right now is because I'm getting older. I know it's really hard to tell. Um, is that new Rob Thomas song about uh, just one more day. All right, so here goes my mozzarella. Not so much mozzarella, Tiffy. Not so much mozzarella. All right. It would be good like this. Way less mozzarella. Definitely going to still keep my parm in there. Even though that's not in the recipe, a little bit of parm. Oh, that was too much on that side. Spread that out. A little bit of parm. The rest of my pepperoni. That's great. I'm gonna use this all up since there's just a little bit. Awesome. Now I'm going to add. What do I want to add? I'm gonna add. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some garlic powder to mine, just a little bit extra garlic. I think I just heard my family. Pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. I rang the bell. I said, come inside and eat pizza rolls. I am still live, everybody, so, um, but here, you can come say hi. Here is... You gotta come around here. Can you say hi? Hi. These hi. are my kiddos. All right, now, um, we're not eating the whole plate, okay? You can either have one really big one or two little ones, okay? okay. But you gotta be quiet. Okay. Can you do that for me? Yes. Okay. We'll go downstairs on the week. Oh, no, we're not taking the food downstairs. You no. can sit at the after, table. After, after. Okay, after, after. All right, so, 
Let's see. Um, yeah, Sammy can help you. Oh my gosh, so much easier to roll when I sprayed the bottom and don't have so much. See how much easier this is rolling up? Second time around, it's just always better. Always, always. Rolling this up. All right. And then I'm going to pinch that down. Beautiful, beautiful. I am going to grab a paper towel. I got a little messy on this side with the sauce. And that sauce burns if you leave it on there. So I'm going to wipe that off. All right. My trash can, how are they? Good. You're eating too, oh, right, Sam? Yep, I okay. No, you don't eat. Hey, hey, no, not while I'm live. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my cut my pieces here and toss them in sauce. Beautiful. I'm actually gonna do a couple without the cornstarch. I don't love all that cornstarch on the outside. So I'm going to do a couple like this where I'm just using my knife to kind of pinch it along the bottom. So with the, I'm making smaller ones so that I can get four across. And pinching. This is this batch is coming out way better for me. I don't know about you guys. All right, let's see. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to keep going. I'm getting four per row with these smaller ones, which I think is a better size. Some of the ones on that last batch came out really big. Aren't they big over there, guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. And delicious. And delicious. I'm so glad you love them. I've got, I've got um, Annika, Peyton, and um, Laura on with me. There's probably some other people on there. They're just not chatting. Not everybody has a device uh, you know, like they might be a, have their computer going or they might just be listening to audio. So not everybody can always chat. But Annika, Laura, and uh, Peyton have been chatting with me the whole time. It's been great. Technology is just crazy these days. Our nanny here, she teaches karate. Can you imagine teaching karate over the internet? She's laughing. Her mouth is full and she's laughing. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of crazy. Can you see Mr. Scott in front of a video camera? No. That's disturbing. That no, thought that, is just disturbing. That thought is disturbing. Yeah. Okay. He's so good with kids, though. Mm -hmm. I think he teaches special ed at the elementary school. Okay. That batch went so much easier. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe it. What a difference. Smaller pieces, less filling all the way around. All right, now I'm going to take my Parmigiano and crumble that. Remember, we crumble this a little bit. So I don't have much left in my canister, so I'm just gonna crumble it right here in my canister with my fingers. I'm just crushing it so that it's in smaller pieces. Just like we did before, I'm just doing it in the canister. And sprinkle the Parmesan on top. There we go. Now you know what's interesting about this recipe that I would do differently we can't we can't necessarily do it now but what i would do differently um next time i made them is i would have some melted butter and i would brush melted butter um 
all over the top. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to grab some butter. You can do this if you want. You totally do not have to do this. I'm just going to put a little pat of butter on the top of each one of these and see what happens, right? Because we're experimenting a little bit. So I'm so this feels like a lot. So I'm going to cut that in half. And I'm just going to put it right on the top. Right on the top. And I know that's just going to melt all over. A really thin slice of butter cut in half right on the top. Just to give it just that extra buttery, yummy, yumminess. Right? We live across the street from a pizzeria and they make these all the time. And it'll be very interesting to see because my children haven't had my haven't had these that I've made for them before. So it'll be interesting to see whether they like this better than the pizza restaurant that's across the street. I think they'll like it when it's got the butter on it. Although I've got one kid that doesn't like sauce and one kid that doesn't like pepperoni. You can just never win, all you kids with your pickiness. All right. The pizza roll, oh, Laura, the pizza rolls are delicious. I'm so glad you like them. Laura says, you mentioned earlier that we would use a different platform so you can see us. Then we would have to get ready in the morning. No, you do not have to get ready in the morning. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is not a beauty competition. This is cooking. But that's funny. You can, um, the, if we decide to do that, Laura, you can choose not to turn your camera on unless, like, you had trouble with something and you wanted to show me what was going on so I could help you or you wanted to then show me, like, what your recipe looked like at the end. That would be super awesome. Uh, but you wouldn't ha have to turn your camera on if we um, if we did it like that. So just know that if if I do decide to do that, which I'm not sure, I have to think about that. Um, okay, my second batch is ready. Uh, I don't see any other questions. I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Mine were smaller, so I'm going to put them in. I put them in at, at 13 minutes, not 15, because I think they're going to cook in a little bit less time this time. All right, so again, I'm going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to clean up. Then I'm going to come back to the comments and see if you guys have any questions, okay? All right. My children are going to stay quiet, right? Yes. How are they? Good. Good? You liked them? Yep. All right, put the butter lid on the sauce. Wash that off. Okay. How were they, Sam? Good. Good? Yeah. We're ex wasn't expecting that today, were you? No. No. Okay, notice how I dripped sauce all down the side of my jar. So I'm wiping it off. Because when you do that, your parents let you cook more. My, my children are looking at me with a very guilty look on their face. I don't want to cook. Though. Okay. All right. This was not nearly as messy as it was first time I did it. Definitely need music. Can you help me with this one? Will you put sure. this in the fridge for me? Sure. Fridge, fridge, fridge. Sweet. All right. I 
just had an idea. Here's my first batch is done, and I'm getting my second one in the oven. Awesome, Annika. I'm so glad. I just came up with another idea of another chance for you to win. So if you, when you're done cooking, if you take a picture of yourself in your clean kitchen with your finished recipe, that way I know that your kitchen is clean like after your recipe was done, then you can post that on Instagram, tag me, hashtag summer cooking challenge week one. So, so, so far I've given you five ways to, to win a prize, right? Recipe one, recipe two, recipe three, invite a friend over and take a picture of you while you're cooking. Well, oh, here's another one. Do you have family or friends that are not close enough to, um, to, to be there with you, invite them. And then when they, then they can, um, win prizes as well. And then the last one is a picture of you, your recipe and your clean kitchen. So that's, Four, I guess that's four. Is that four? Five. One, two, three. Clean kitchen. Oh, and a friend. Five ways to win a prize every single week. What's the prize? Um, it's different every week. This week is either a customized apron or a customized water bottle. Cool. Okay. Let's see how my peeps are doing. Isaac, will you put this in the pantry with the other uh, sauce? And put the salt away. In the pantry, that's where these go? The pantry. No, the open one goes in the fridge. So remember, if you have sauce left over in your jar, that needs to go in the fridge. If you have a jar that's unopened, that can stay unrefrigerated. But once you open up that jar of pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce, that has to go in the fridge. Okay. And same thing with your pepperoni. Once you open this up, it can needs to go. Pepperoni? Yep, you can have some more pepperoni. Um, do not pour the dirty cornstarch back in the container. You need to uh, throw this away. use the last of the butter so I'm going to here's something I just learned yesterday you think this is recyclable don't you right yeah. it is not this plastic coating on the outside is not recyclable isn't that I've been recycling these for years and the worst thing about it is if when they see something that contaminates the recycling load, they can't just take it out. The whole load gets put back in, like goes to the landfill. So that it contaminates. So you want to be really careful. And what the recycling lady told me was when in doubt, throw it out. Because it would, if, it would be worse to, you think, oh, I'd rather recycle this. But what you're doing is you're risking, imagine a big garbage truck full of recycling that is now no good just because they they saw it. I mean, if they don't see it, they don't see it. It just gums up the wax on this paper, um, gums it up. So um, I just learned that yesterday. That made me sick. That made me super minutes. sad. Six more minutes. Are you watching the timer? Mm -hmm. Six more minutes until you log out. Okay. 
Um, no, no questions yet. Okay, let's keep cleaning. Let's keep cleaning. All right, this. Can you put that in the sink? Yep. And we're gonna put. Here's more dirty dishes. Can you put this in the pantry, please? And I'm gonna wipe my phone. All right. This. Oh. All right, get my cutting board. Here we go. Off camera, please. Okay. Okay. See, this is all stuff that's going to get cut out in the um, in the condensed version. But. Questions. All right, you let me know when I'll turn this towards you. You let me know. Comments are right there. You let me know when a comment comes up and you can read it to me. Okay. My first batch is done and I am yep. My yep, I got that already. So you just tell me. Okay, I'm going to do a quick lesson on cleaning the counter. We do not just wipe it down on the floor. You could, but then you got to clean the floor. So what we want to do is we want to cup our hand and we're going to wipe each row like you were mowing the grass. Each row into our hand. If your hand starts to get full, dump it in the trash and then start over again. Okay? Otherwise, you are going to make more work for yourself because you'll have to clean the floor in addition to just the counter. And since we were using flour, you want to make sure that, you know, you do want to check your floor to see if there's anything and down the front of the cabinets um, to see if there's anything you need to clean up there. And if you were using a stand mixer, you need to wipe down your stand mixer. And even if we were using an electric mixer, part of cleaning that not only is cleaning the uh, the the tongs on it but you also have to wipe down the actual mixer because flour gets um, you know up in there and this is my total pet peeve at the cooking school I always take a wet rag and I wipe all the way down the power cord all the way to the end because inevitably there's food all over the power cord too. That's my pet peeve. Oh my gosh, it drives me crazy. All right, anything? How are my peeps doing? Mm -hmm. um, nothing. Nothing new? Okay. These are all clean. Will you put those back in the drawer? Be careful of the light power cord. All right. Ow. Oh, just stub your toe. No, such a will roll right over it. Okay. I'm going to see this for a second. Oh, we are eight minutes over. So I need you to let me know whether you want me to hang on. And, and before we go, I want to ask a couple of questions. Um, so I, so it's 12.09, I'm going to give it one more minute before I sign off until, um, what's today? Today's Tuesday. On Thursday, on Thursday, we, I'm having a live Q&A right here on YouTube and to answer any questions about the challenge recipes this week. 
So if you have any questions or anything like that, you can log on, you can ask me anything, and I will see my second batch is in the oven with four minutes left. Okay, Annika, perfect. It doesn't have to be done. I just want to make sure that you your questions are all answered. Um, so let me know whether you um, whether you have any more questions. If not, give me a thumbs up. I'm good. See you next week. Um, anything. Tell me what you think. Okay. Oh, good night or good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for lunch. Okay. I've got thumbs up from Laura. I got a thumbs up, I think, from Aunt, from Annika. Oh, my batch is done. Let's see how they turned out. Woo, super hot. All right, y'all. Oh my goodness. This, see you next week, Laura. This batch, I'm going to use the cornstarch and the butter on the top. Oh my goodness. These are, I don't know if you can see the difference here. Let's see if I can scooch them that way without. There we go. That is yummy. See you next week, Laura. Goodbye. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you for French macarons. I will pull everybody to make sure if everybody has made French macarons before and they were happy with their results, then we will definitely do a more advanced recipe next week. Um, and I heard loud and clear that we want to do cinnamon rolls instead of a breakfast crescent ring the, um, the, when we come back in July. So thanks for being with me. It's been a great kickoff to the summer, and I will see you next week. Let's see. Now...